takes place June, July, and August. June, July, and August. Now, this is a different breed of machine than what we rounded up outside. This is a Chevy, and the Chevy high quality wool for the making of sweaters. Now, in the normal day, John shares over 200 sheep in a long day, he can do up to 300. Now, he just do it slowly, that you can see how it's done. Now, when I came home from school in the evening, our work was shearing the sheep by hand. There was no electricity on the farm. All the work was done using a hand shear. And using a hand shear in the evening, I could do about 20 sheep in a full day, you do about 70. Now, this is beautiful soft wool. This is your wool to go for sweaters. The sheep even rounded up outside. That wool for blankets and carpets. But this is sweater wool. Now, when John is shearing the sheep, he always keeps rotating and moving the sheep. Uh, that way it's easy on John and easier on the sheep. Now the scale shearing is something very much like you and me go to a physiotherapist or a chiropractor, the same type of skill. And when John keeps rotating and moving them, that keeps the sheep calm and relaxed and it's also easy on John and easy on his back. And he always is ready for the unpredictable and the unpredictable is the sheep will jump up and run out the door. So he always has to apply a certain amount of hand and leg pressure. That's very important. And this sheep is the mother to a baby lamb, and the baby lamb would have been born March and April. Mm. Okay. Oh, she's pregnant. Yeah, she's pregnant. Yeah, that's what she said. Now, first thing John reduced the patient medication for their health and well-being. This kills the parasite, liver flu, worms, ticks, pneumonia, and then last but not least, he will apply his identification to the sheep. So he put red on their back side, and he stamped the letter K for Kassan on their right side. So every farmer, different colours, different identification. Every farmer, different colours, different identification. Now this is a Chevy. So the Chevy sheep are big sheep. Uh, the Merino sheep are come from Australia and New Zealand. Nobody here from Australia? No. no. Uh, so sh Merino come from that region. The Chevy uh, mostly originate in the United Kingdom. So what happens then with the wool, it goes into a big bag. John will show you this is lovely soft wool. There's enough there now to make nearly two sweaters. So the Chevy wool is just falling apart. It's high grade wool, just like a tissue paper. And you see that yellow color, like orangey? That is the lanolin, L-A-N-O-L-I-N. The lanolin is the wool fat, the wool oil that keep the sheep dry and warm. The outside of the wool can be wet, the inside dry. That's very important. Thanks, John. Now, years ago, we Sure, the sheep, we got eight to ten dollars for every sheep today, you get about two dollars. So there's less demand nowadays for wool throughout the world. A lot less demand. In the past, the big demand for wool was army uniforms, was one. Insulating cruise liners and battleships, the big warships. They were insulated with wool because wool keep you warm in the winter, cool in the summer. Also, wool is fire resistant. That wool there, if you want to set the fire, set the Fire to it, it won't burn, it will only cinch. You could throw petrol or gasoline on it, crack a match, it will only cinch. So that's the why wool was always used for bedding in the past, blankets, because it protected you in the event of a fire in the house. And going back 30, 40 years ago, when people started using those two base first, there was major accidents because they were not fire resistant. Now they are, no worries at all. Uh, but, and as well, that's why our uniforms were made from wool in the past, uh, because they protected the uh, army personnel from um, chemical attacks as well, because it will absorb chemicals. There's great absorption in wool. Now the man here a few weeks ago, he was from Toronto, he was the police service there, and he said in some of the police cars in Canada, uh, they take wool in containers, that if they attend a road traffic accident or whatever, and they need to wipe up any spills, 
uh, they can open the container, use the wool, drop it up, put it back in, seal it, and have it sealed away for process. So there's new ways for wool. Now, one of the big purchasers of wool in the past were Russia and China. They bought a lot of wool. Russia uh, wanted to make a lot of clothes. Now, they'd love to buy a wool, but they're not allowed at the moment. And that's one of the reasons wool has come down in price. Uh, there's a trade embargo on Russia because of the conflict in Syria. And as mm -hmm. well, then, China is moving away from wool and they're moving to synthetics. So China's moving to synthetics. Uh, anybody who wearing socks made from smart wool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one lady. So smart wool would be cottons, synthetics, wools, mixed together. It's a light, breathable product. When you go looking at, <coughs> at a pair of socks made from smart wool, they might look much, but it's in the quality. They're light, they're breathable, very good investment. And that's the way to go. Now, in the past, the big demand was clothes made from wool, blankets. Uh, again, a lot of new clothes are made from wool, making lighter materials, a mixture of wool, that's the way to go. And then in England, when the wool is processed, the lanolin is extracted. That's the wool cap. And the lanolin then goes onto the pharmaceutical industry for the making of cosmetics and head creams. Mm. So it equal to pharmacy and high quality cosmetics that contain some percent of that. Now, as a local Indian Ken Mayor, all of you will see a George Red Scotland Ken Mayor if you lunch. So, there's a local